reporters that the congressman pulled the fire alarm. Bowman told Fox he needed to open the door badly and thought that pulling the alarm would do the trick. Meanwhile, House Republican Marjorie Taylor Greene pointed out that Bowman violated the same law being used to prosecute, prosecute January 6 rioters. I want to talk about Jamal Bowman pulling the, the fire alarm. Uh, Capitol Police are questioning him right now because it's on video. But he, this is the exact, he violated the exact same law that January 6 defendants are being prosecuted for every single day. He violated the exact same law, uh, interrupting an official proceeding, and it, by pulling a fire alarm, it's on video. Well, and, you know, we had a couple congressmen who are quick to take to X to definitely weigh in on the matter. We have Congressman Troy Nels, uh, who said, uh, holding up a pair of handcuffs, Jamal, are you ready? <laughs> <laughs> are we showing, do we have a full screen to show that? Oh, maybe not. Um, we also have Brian Mass, who put up uh, next to each other a door and a fire alarm just to make sure that <laughs> you know Congressman <laughs> Bowman knows the difference between the two. Joey, I'm going to I'm going to start with you on this. You know, first of all, they actually make a Marjorie Taylor Greene made a valid point. Um, you know, was this illegal in the sense that at at minimum, it is a misdemeanor in D.C. area to pull a fire alarm if you are not concerned for a true fire. At most, the, you also have the obstruction of offic official proceedings, which is what you're seeing on a lot of January 6 charges. What's your take on it? I worked in the Cannon House office building. Um, I'd walk up a lot of steps just to get to a door. I was never on time sometimes because of all the work I had to put in to get in there. I never had, was in such a pinch to try to get a door open <laughs> that I confused a fire alarm uh, for a door handle. So I, I don't know, it, you know, he's obviously trying to lie his way out of this. I, I think I can say with a with certain amount of certainty, he pulled the fire alarm on purpose and he did it to obstruct what was happening. And, you know, I just hope that, what I really hope is that Hakeem Jeffries is so mad about it that, it, that it, he, gets, he gets handled from within. That's what I really hope. Well, you know what? We did have a reporter. There was a reporter who was able to catch up with Jamal Bowman outside of their office. And this is what was said. You know, Bowman said, I was rushing to make a vote. I was trying to get to a door. I thought the alarm would open a door. And uh, the reporter asked, so you pulled a fire alarm to open the door? Bowman, yes. Reporter, I, how does that make sense? Bowman, what do you mean? Reporter, <laughs> how do you, I mean, when have you ever pulled a fire alarm? You thought it says, it says fire on it. Bowman, I was just trying to get my vote. The door that's usually open wasn't open, and you know, I didn't mean to cause confusion. I didn't know it was going to trip the whole, I didn't know, I didn't know, I didn't know, I didn't know. I mean, Jason, you were in Congress. I mean, this, <laughs> what's your take on this? Um, sounds like an idiot. Um, <laughs> let, let's yeah. go ahead and put that picture back up. If you look, Behind the congressman, there are two <laughs> doors with push handles. Yeah. Now, they may have said, don't open, there's a fire, you know, it caused the fire alarm to go off. It would have achieved both. It would have opened the door and caused the fire alarm to go up. Oh. But no, he did it. He's got his hand up. I want to see a picture of what's going on there. But he should be treated. He's the one that went out there like everybody else and said, nobody's above the law. If he didn't have that little pin on his, on his uh, coat that says congressman, that person probably would be charged with interrupting a government proceeding. That's exactly what he did in this case. Critical time for, to vote. We got hours till funding runs out on the, yeah. on the whole government. The entire Cannon office building had to be evacuated. Police were called, fire departments called, and, <laughs> and, and something's gotta happen to it. It's well, gotta be a consequence. And it came on the heels of the Democrats saying they wanted more time before the vote. So I don't know. I don't know about that story. But Kevin McCarthy himself, House Majority Leader, he's saying there should be an ethics investigation. I think ethics should look at this, but this is serious. This should not go without punishment. This is an embarrassment. You're elected to be a member of Congress. You pulled a fire alarm? In a minute of hours before the government being shut down, trying to dictate that government would shut down? What's going through a person's mind like that? Well, Sarah Bowman was a former middle school principal. I mean, how do you think he handled if students were going to pull a fire alarm? I mean, that's all he knows to do if he doesn't want... He, he's like, okay, so if someone's caught smoking in the bathroom 
or someone doesn't want to take a test, I know you pull the fire alarm. And that's what he did. Exactly. He learned from the best from his students. And now he's taking it all the way up to Capitol Hill. <laughs> and actually, I have to say, there was a, a little sense of humor in this because the Democrats have been riding the high horse lately in all of this, saying, you know, oh, look at the Republicans. Look at them. They're fighting in the back. You know, you got Matt Gates and the speaker behind the scenes, ready to throw blows. Everybody's upset, you know, on the Republican side. And now you've got the Democrats, right, who have to look at Jamal Bowman and just be like, oh, wow, we... You did this to us right now, right at the very end. So it's it's kind of a little bit humorous. And I like the way the speaker laid it out. Like, he pulled the fire alarm. Just the way the speaker does that. You know, McCarthy is just so nonchalant about it. But this is definitely, this is definitely an eye-opener for the American people about what is going on. So anybody out there, any American who feels like, you know, we've put the best of the best in Congress, this is an example of what Nobody we... feels that way. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I mean, Jason's Jason, pretty amazing. Nobody Jason sits around amazing. and feels that way, okay? I, I don't know where you got that that's, from. That's right. But now we have evidence, pure evidence of this, right? Pure evidence of this. Jason, former member of Congress, what do you, what's your take on what McCarthy's saying? Do you think about the ethics investigation? I mean, there could be an ethics investigation. That's Look, Republicans got to make sure... Or should charges be brought? I mean, he, he was obstructing the official... Republicans got to make sure that they don't jump right to the conclusion. Yeah. Show This is an opportunity for Republicans to show that they're the adults in the room. Mm -hmm. Do an investigation. If he did it, they should be charged with it, and there should be consequences. Well, isn't he? He already said he did it. He's it, like, I, uh, he, yeah, no, I did it. it, it, it well, first, exactly. do we know, but do you, you remember? Prove it. Do you remember, though, first, though, the official response was from his staff that said, oh, he was running quickly and it was an accident, which yes. obviously. So here, we here's how this investigation may go. If he texts his comms director, uh, I'm not going to get there. I'm going to pull the fire alarm so I can get there. So that's, that's, that's where an investigation, mm -hmm. like, we're going to look at your cell phones. What did you say to your staff? Did, did Hakeem Jeffries tell you to go down there and cause a scene real quick? That's where an investigation would go. Quite honestly, as an American, yes, I would love to see accountability for this. This is a little bit funny. It's a whole lot ironic. Right. But the speaker has been walking around as a man defeated for a couple of days right now. I don't know he's going to make it till Christmas as the speaker. Our government, I guess, won't shut down, but it's going to be funded. Plus, there's a lot going on up there. I don't know that this is what I want House Republicans focused on. I really didn't even care to hear the speaker talk about it today. Because I want to know that he can get, I don't know, those 20-some-odd Republicans that are objecting to everything he puts forth. I want to see that he can lead and get them together on border no, or Ukraine or something to bring them back together absolutely. and have some sort of party or caucus in Congress. Absolutely. And he's facing a lot of criticism right now. So you're absolutely right, Joey. I mean, the, the speaker needs to kind of get back on the horse, right, unify the Republican Party, find a way to appease some of those that are going up against him. And I don't know if he's going to be able to do it, but I do think... Not all of them. I know, <laughs> not all of them. And that's the point. And I think the American people are watching, you know, what's taking place, and they're going to make their decisions. It, it, they are watching a complete embarrassing, chaotic disaster happening in Congress, in the Senate right now. It is embarrassing. Right. I, I do think if anybody's going to pull an alarm, let's go ahead and do it on the border. If we yeah, let's, the we southern border, yeah. let's like do that. Time. Such a great point. <laughs> hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.